Generally, people's class is defined by how much money they make. In the U.S., generally, there are three classes, poor, middle class, and rich. Some people also think there is another class in between poor and middle class called working class. United States culture is based on the idea that people can move up the economic ladder and become middle class or even rich if they were born poor. This is the idea of going from rags to riches. Moving up the class ladder is not easy, though. Higher education needed to get a good-paying job is expensive. Class in the United States is more than just how much money a person makes, though. Education, what job a person has, where they live, and the culture all play a role in what class a person will be classified as. For example, a person with only a high school diploma and a low-paying service job may be considered poor or low-class, while a person with a Ph.D. who owns their own company would be considered high-class or wealthy. In a way, this makes sense because high-paying jobs usually require a high-level education. But for some people, class is something you are born with. For example, the children of billionaire Donald Trump were born rich and upper-class without having done anything to earn that status. Gender plays a role, too, in how someone can move up the economic ladder. Women earn less than men do, so it is harder for them to accumulate wealth. Race also plays a role in how much people earn and their ability to move up the economic ladder. In the United States, most families require both the man and woman to work in order to support the household. Chicago is known as the Windy City. Some people think this is because of the breeze that blows almost constantly. The city is located in the state of Illinois, on the shore of one of the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan, which is the fifth largest freshwater body in the world. Chicago may also be called the Windy City because of the wind tunnel effect created in downtown by many tall buildings. Skyscrapers are an important part of Chicago's history. The first skyscraper in the U.S. was built in the city in 1884. At only 10 stories, it was impressive for its time. The skyscraper was eventually demolished. Um, Chicago is the home of other famous firsts. It was the birthplace of the refrigerated rail car, mail-order catalogs, the car radio, the TV remote control, the first Ferris wheel, the first steel railroad, the first planetarium in the Western Hemisphere, Chicago is also the home to the first blood bank and the first drive-in bank. It is also the home to the Lincoln Park Zoo, the oldest public zoo in the U.S. Uh, maybe the Windy City should be called the City of Firsts. Chicago is the third most populous city in the U.S., after New York City and Los Angeles. A little more than two and a half million people live in the city that has more than 100 neighborhoods. President Barack Obama used to live in Chicago. Nearly 40 million people visit Chicago every year. Many of them visit the Willis Tower. Formerly known as the Sears Tower, it is the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. It takes only a minute to get up to the 103rd floor sky deck thanks to some of the fastest elevators in the world. From the sky deck, visitors can see four states, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Boston is the capital of Massachusetts. It is the largest city in the New England state and is rich with history. This is why over 12 million people visit the city every year. It is a very old city founded in 1630 by English colonists fleeing religious persecution. The American Revolution, when colonists, known as patriots, fought for their independence from the British, began in Boston with the Battle of Lexington. Other key events in the revolution occurred in the city. One was the Boston Massacre, when British troops fired upon protesters, killing five. The Boston Tea Party, when colonists dumped an entire shipment of British tea into the harbor to protest taxes, was not a party at all. Paul Revere's Midnight Ride, where he warned colonists of British troops approaching, also happened in Boston. Many of these sites can be accessed by taking a walk down the Freedom Trail, a red line of bricks embedded in the ground through the city. Boston is also a city of notable firsts. 
America's first public school was founded in Boston in 1635. Boston Common, where British troops camped during the American Revolution and where early colonists hanged people, is the oldest public park in the United States. Boston is also home to the oldest subway system in the United States. Like many cities in the United States, immigrants played a large role in its development. Irish immigrants who settled in Boston, for example, played a large role in both local and national politics. Boston also has a large and active Puerto Rican community and Italian community. President John F. Kennedy and his family have ties to Boston. Boston is also well known for many colleges and universities that surround it. Some of the most famous are Harvard and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Boston attracts more than 350,000 college students from around the world. The American Civil War happened from 1861 to 1865. The main cause was Southern states feeling that the U.S. federal government in Washington, D.C. should not have the power to tell them what to do. And this was especially true about two issues, taxes and slavery. The Southern economy was based on agriculture, while the Northern economy was based on manufacturing. Southern crops, like cotton, were sold to factories, and then Southerners had to pay taxes on the finished goods sold back to them like clothing. Many Southerners felt this was unfair. Additionally, the agricultural economy in the South was reliant on the labor of enslaved Africans and their descendants. Many people, especially from the North, felt this was wrong and that slavery needed to be abolished. Southerners felt the abolitionists were threatening their way of life. Seven Southern slave states, banded together, declared their secession and formed the Confederate States of America. The government in Washington, D.C. and its army was known as the Union, since they were fighting to keep the country united. Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States during the Civil War. The president of the Confederate States was Jefferson Davis. The first battle was the Battle of Fort Sumter. During the war, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared the freedom of slaves in the Confederate States of America. This action was supposed to show that Lincoln was still in charge of the entire United States. The Civil War was the bloodiest war fought inside the United States. 620,000 were killed and millions more were injured. One of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War was the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania. 51,000 people from both sides died, more than in any other battle. The Civil War ended in 1865 when General Robert E. Lee of the Confederate Army surrendered. The United Nations, an international organization founded in 1945 after the Second World War by 51 countries, has its headquarters along the East River in New York City. Technically, anyone who visits UN headquarters is not in New York anymore. They are not even in the United States. That is because the land and buildings are considered international territory. The United Nations has its own flag, its own post office, and its own postage stamps. There is no need to change currency, however. The UN uses the US dollar. Six official languages are used at the United Nations. They are Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. UN rules override the laws of New York City. This does not mean that people can commit crimes there and get away with it. There is no immunity to those who commit crimes there. The property where the United Nations now stands used to belong to a slaughterhouse. The current buildings were completed in 1952. The perimeter of the UN is lined with flagpoles with the flags of all 193 UN member states and the UN flag. They are arranged in alphabetical order in English. Some may think it's great to be a neighbor to a peacekeeping agency like the UN. Many New Yorkers don't always think so, though. Every time a dignitary like a president or prime minister visits, streets are closed, making it hard to get around and to find parking. You don't need to be a diplomat to visit the UN, though. There are tours Monday through Friday, and not just in English. 
Guided tours are available in English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, and Swedish. Visitors can have a meal at the delegate's dining room, featuring a buffet of food from all over the world. The Beatles are an English group of musicians from Liverpool, England. It took America by storm with their appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show on primetime television. The group's first appearance was seen by more than 73 million viewers in February 1964, introducing the band to the American people. In the months to follow, the group became the biggest rock and roll band ever to hit the United States. The group's success opened the door for other British bands to make their way to America. Bands such as the Rolling Stones, the Who the Kinks, and the Dave Clark Five were soon playing their music to American audiences. The Beatles were made up by four of the finest musicians to ever play rock music. Their lead singer was Paul McCartney and drummer Ringo Starr. Both still play to this day. Two of the original members, singers and songwriters John Lennon and George Harrison, have tragically passed away, but their music lives in American culture to this day. The Beatles have sold more records in the United States than any other country in the world. There was controversy in the U.S. prior to the group's first appearance. Conservative Americans viewed the Beatles as upstarts, with brash, new ideas, lyrics, and sound— the young generation of the time was ready for a change, and the Beatles gave them what they wanted. They were nicknamed the Mop Tops because of their long, bowl-like haircuts that flew in the face of convention in the 60s. Nothing was going to stop the Beatles, though. Their music is as popular today as it was 50-plus years ago. One of the most recent social changes taking place in the United States and in the world is social networking. Social networking in itself is not a new development. These types of groups have been in existence for at least 150 years, and probably longer than that. In the times before the invention of the personal computer and the advent of the World Wide Web, social networking was done in person. People who had similar likes and interests would gather together to share experiences, make new contacts, and promote themselves or their businesses. On the internet, social networking websites made their first appearances during the late 1990s. The first major social networking website in the United States was MySpace. MySpace was a comprehensive social networking site that allowed its users to exchange messages, share pictures, and make new friends in a way that was never thought of in the past. With MySpace, people who did not go out much could reach out to others from the comfort of their own homes. In 2004, Facebook was created. It was originally a website created for use by Harvard University students, graduates, and faculty, but it soon expanded to include just about everyone. Facebook is an elaborate social networking site that has grown incredibly fast. It is now larger than some of the largest companies in the world. It is a website that is in constant change. New features are added regularly. Facebook has revolutionized the way people stay connected with each other and the rest of the world. The way it works is simple. Users can set up a new account easily. All a new user needs is an email address to start. Once a person has created an account, he or she can invite friends by sending a request out to people they know who also have their own Facebook pages. Once you get started, making new friends will come easily. America is one of the most diversified countries in the world. It is comprised of many different cultures from Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It is truly a melting pot of diversity. All these cultures have come together to create a new culture, an American culture. Many of the traditions customs, religions, and celebrations of these cultures have been adopted into American culture, including funeral traditions. Traditional American funerals are basic. They usually include some sort of religious ritual, followed by a procession to the burial grounds and a small ceremony at the gravesite, but these vary depending on the culture. At most American funerals, the deceased person's family sends out a death announcement called an obituary, 
These obits normally serve to pass information to others about the deceased and the time and day of the funeral event. At the church service, the deceased is usually eulogized by friends and family. This is where a person goes up to the front of the crowd to say a few things about the deceased and how he or she affected their life. The procession usually takes the form of a caravan of private cars and trucks that follow the hearse, which contains the deceased's coffin and remains. At the grave site, another small ritual takes place where the deceased is given a blessing from a member of the clergy. Friends and family are then allowed to say goodbye to the deceased. There is an American tradition of picking up a handful of soil and tossing it on the coffin as a way of saying farewell to the deceased. The family then gathers at a home or restaurant with some of the attendees to have a meal and to exchange stories before going on their way. Most cultures in the U.S. have adopted this traditional American funeral ritual, but many include features that are unique to their individual culture. One of the most significant dates in the history of the United States is November 22, 1963. That is the day President John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, while riding in an open-air car. The president was visiting Texas for the first time since his inauguration in January 1961. Kennedy was one of the most popular presidents in the history of the United States, and still remains so today. His death shocked the nation for several reasons, but mostly because it was televised on a live broadcast. Kennedy was the first president to appear on television at a time when most Americans owned a TV. He was not the first president to be televised, but previous presidents who appeared on TV did not reach the general public because before 1960, not many Americans owned a set. Kennedy was warned not to ride in an open-air car that day by his bodyguards, but he wanted the public to see him live. He did not want to be hidden behind an armored car. According to the official government commission, Kennedy fell victim to a single assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, but many Americans dispute that finding to this date. Police say Oswald shot the president from a building while Kennedy rode in his car with his wife. The mood was festive at the time as the city of Dallas welcomed the president to Texas. Kennedy was a handsome, young president who was the youngest man ever to reach the presidency. Oswald later killed a Dallas police officer during his escape from the crime scene, but was soon found hiding in a movie theater. He required police protection from an outraged public and was held in protective custody. Oswald, who was a former member of the U.S. military, was unhappy with the president for his policies but never admitted to being the assassin. Conspiracy theories involving rival political parties, the Cuban government, and organized crime have also been advanced as to who actually killed Kennedy.